Kathy from houseoftoefl.com, and I'm here today to talk to you about the TOEFL Integrated Writing. This task poses a big challenge for many students, so today I hope to simplify it, show you what to expect, and show you how you can get the best score on this very challenging part of the TOEFL test. Let's get started. Let's begin with what to expect during the integrated essay. First of all, it's important for you to know that it is the first essay that you will write. After the integrated essay, you will write an independent essay. Now, for the integrated essay, the first thing that will happen is you will read a passage that has four paragraphs. You have three minutes to read it, and then it will disappear. Next, you listen to a lecture with a different perspective. It is usually casting doubt on the three points that are made in the reading. Now, some books you might buy about the TOEFL test will tell you that it could support or give more information to support the points that are made in the reading. But in all my years of teaching TOEFL and all the essays and all the practice tests that I've seen, I've never seen one that supports. So let's assume, and this video is going to assume that you're going to get one that opposes. And that is what you should prepare for. After the lecture, you will have a chance to see the passage again because it will reappear on your screen and you will type your essay on the other side of that screen. Now, it is very important for you to know that you cannot word for word copy the reading even though it's there. If you do that, you will not be given points for that part of what you've written because after all, it's not a typing test. It's not a test to see if you can cut and paste. You have to put it into your own words, a skill that's called paraphrasing, and you must do this in order to get a high score. Lastly, you should write at least 225 words for a good score. Now, again, a lot of books will tell you 185 words is just a fine word count, but in all my experience, the more words you write, the better. So let's keep 225 as our minimum and try to even go above that if possible. Okay, next we have a sample of something that you might see during this test. This is an essay, it's a four paragraph essay that gives a position on an issue. Now, if you would like, now would be a good time for you to pause the video and just go ahead and read this to yourself. Okay, now I wanna go over the structure of this essay. If we look at the first sentence, it defines the topic, which is homeschooling. It says homeschooling, teaching children in the home instead of in a public school has increased by 7%. So we know the topic of this essay is homeschooling, but we don't yet know the author's position. If we keep reading, we can see that the author is in favor of homeschooling because we have the positive position where it says there are good reasons for this trend to continue. So by this, we know the author is in favor of homeschooling and the author's position will be given to you in the first paragraph. The next three paragraphs start with what I call a topic sentence, which gives you the author's main point for each paragraph. And there will be three points that are presented. So our first point here, we can see, Homeschooling tailors to children's specific educational needs. So that's the first point. The rest of this paragraph will have details that support that. The second main point is about emotional freedom a child who is homeschooled will experience. And then that goes on to give us reasons and more details. And then lastly, it says the families have less stress and pressure. And then it will go on to give more details about that. So I hope you've read this whole thing and I hope you've taken some notes because next we're going to listen to a sample lecture that casts doubt on those three points. Now, before I go to that slide, I want to let you know that you will not see any audio script in the TOEFL. And also you will not see anything except a photo of the professor, which is not important. So you can ignore what's on the screen and just focus on your notes. So here we go. Let's listen to that lecture. Now listen to a lecture on the topic you just read about. 
As people become more disenchanted with the current education system, there has been a rise in the instances of parents deciding to homeschool their children as indicated by homeschooling statistics. However, there are many serious disadvantages of homeschooling. The first disadvantage of homeschool programs is that no matter how well designed they are, they will not be a match for a nationally recognized school curriculum with accreditation. Unless the parent has trained and holds qualifications as a teacher, they will not be able to teach their children as efficiently as a trained professional teacher would. Even though homeschool parents can teach specialized subjects, it's unlikely that a parent will have expertise in every subject. Children need to learn from a variety of teachers, each with their own expertise. One of the more serious negative effects of homeschooling is that children can miss out on the opportunity to interact with other children. This can stunt their development socially as they will not learn how to communicate or behave in group settings, vital skills that are necessary as an adult. As far as bullies are concerned, I will admit that bullies are a serious problem in school. However, school is the time in which children must learn to stand up for themselves. After all, their parents will not be there to protect them once they enter adulthood. And without the school setting, the fact that they do not attend the school with other children in the neighborhood will set them apart, making it even harder for them to make friends. The stress that homeschooling places on families is also a strong argument against homeschooling. Not only do parents have to prepare lessons on every subject, but they also need to research each topic enough to feel comfortable answering any questions the child may have. This is a huge amount of work, and even after this, there is still the question of how to present the lessons to the child. A professional teacher is already trained in how to present necessary material. This, of course, will add to the stress and pressure on families. Now let's take a look at the notes that I took for the integrated writing, the task I presented to you. You'll notice I take my notes in a very clear way. I split the paper down the middle, and on the left side I write R for reading, and on the right side I write L for listening. And then right after the R or the L, I write the main position of the writer and the main position of the speaker. Then I write the three points on the left that are the three main points that the reading made. And on the right-hand side of my paper, I write the three main points that the professor made. This way, they're side by side, they're right next to each other, and I can clearly see the connection between the three points that are made in the reading and the three points that are made in the listening. I recommend you pause the video here and take a look at these points that I made and see if they're the same as the points that you made in your note taking. Next, we're going to look at a template. This is a template that I developed that you can use for pretty much any integrated writing task because they're always casting doubt. The lecture always cast doubt on the reading. So you can pause it here and take a look at it. Notice the variety of language that I use and notice there's a little bit more space for the lecture. And I did that on purpose and it is because the ETS gives higher scores to people whose essays are more concentrated on the lecture. So try to make your writing a little bit more about the lecture than about the reading. So you can pause it here and take a look at this template. Next, we have my sample essay, which would receive the best score, which is a five. You'll notice at the very top, I've written the question. The question will always be very, very similar in wording to this. Using points and examples from the lecture, explain how the professor cast doubt on the points made in the reading. It will always be something, the language might change a little bit, but it will always be something similar to this. Now, again, I recommend you pause the video here and take your time to read this essay. And you can try to write your own sample essay for this topic as well, and see how close you get to getting the main points that I've written here.
Lastly, I just want to remind you of some things really quickly. Remember, do not copy the reading word for word. You must use your own words. You must paraphrase. If you copy the reading, they will not give you any points for what you've written about the reading. So don't do it. Use your own words and paraphrase. Second, when you practice, keep to the 20 minutes. A lot of my students will practice allowing themselves 40 minutes, 50 minutes, even an hour. But in the TOEFL, you will not get that kind of time. So try to keep your time limit to the same as the TOEFL. Next, write 225 words or more. Try to think of 225 as your minimum. The more words, the better. And here's something a lot of students don't think about, and that's try to increase your typing speed. It's going to help you not only on the TOEFL, it's going to help you beyond when you get to university. And last, for more information, for more tips, and to write to me and contact me, you can contact me at www.houseoftoefl.com for more information. Thank you for joining me for this lesson, and this is Kathy. Good luck on your TOEFL, and I'll see you on my next video.